Welcome to Talk World Radio, a half-hour discussion of politics as if the people mattered. I'm David Swanson. This week on Talk World Radio, Cop City. What is it and how can we stop it? Our guest is Reverend Kayana Jones. She is a political and social justice activist and community organizer and a staunch advocate for quality, affordable child care and equity in education. She currently works with community movement builders to educate, engage, and empower the black community in Atlanta, Georgia, focusing on self-sustainability. Before moving back to Georgia in 2020, Kayana was a community organizer in Russell, New Jersey. It was there that she began her life of advocacy and resistance to white supremacy and oppressive systems. She was ordained as a prophetess in the Lord's Church on July 14, 2020 by Pastor Shonda Obi of Obi One Global Ministries International. She is the proprietor of E equals MC Squared Inter- Educational Services where she works as a homeschool curriculum consultant, IEP advocate, and German translator. She is a proud daughter of East Atlanta, old school hip hop lover, and the biggest fan of her granny, Mary Kate Thomas. Kayana is the wife of Jared R. Moore, mother to their five unique, extraordinary children. See stopcopcitysolidarity.org. Reverend Kayana Jones, welcome to Talk World Radio. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for doing what you're doing to stop Cop City. Uh, for those who haven't heard anything, uh, what is Cop City? So Cop City is a proposed so-called public safety training facility that was proposed by former Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms. Right now, it is being heavily promoted and uh, pushed through by current Mayor Andre Dickens, who was on council at the time. He was in favor of that project. But what that project does is take 381 acres of forest land, the largest urban forest in the southeastern United States, which is located here in Atlanta. It would destroy that entire tract of land. And in place of our forest, um, a very important entrenchment creek and watershed there, we would have a militarized police training facility. This training facility would include a mock city. Original plans also included a bomb testing facility and a Black Hawk helicopter landing pad. Right now, as a result of the community stakeholder, um, the community stakeholder group, that was formed when the project was first proposed, that community stakeholder group has mandated that the bomb testing facility be removed from those plans. Hopefully everything will be removed from those plans if we are able to successfully appeal the land disturbance permit that was given. Most U.S. cities, correct me if I'm wrong, most cities in the world don't have one of these things, uh, cities that are less safe and cities that are more safe. Why, why does Atlanta need this? Well, Cop City, the inception of it is a direct response to the social uprisings of 2020 that saw people in Atlanta heavily protesting things like the murder of George Floyd, a local Atlantan, Rayshard Brooks, the murder of Breonna Taylor and Ahmaud Arbery. What Cop City is meant to do is to quell those types of resistance from people in the community. A very wealthy community in Atlanta known as the Buckhead neighborhood essentially said to the mayor and council during that time that they have to make the city safer from these uprisings that we can't have this going on in Atlanta. So something had to be done. And that was when Cop City was proposed by the Atlanta Police Foundation. But these were protests of police killings. Did the protests kill anybody? I mean, shouldn't there be a response to the police killings, not to the protests thereof? Oh, absolutely. Um, There were no people killed by protesters. Um, These definitely were in protest to police killings and also to what happened in the case of Ahmaud Aubrey. You know, we were protesting a law at the time that was a citizen's arrest law. 
which was what was going to be used and tried to be used as a defense for those who murdered Ahmaud Aubrey. So in these cases, these are citizens that are protesting not only unjust and unfair laws, many of which have not been reviewed for decades, but also unfair treatment by police officers. We want police officers to be held to the same standards that everyday citizens are because it's not fair that a police officer can murder an unarmed person and claim that they feared for their lives when that would never work for you or me. So there, there seem to be quite a lot of people opposing this. Uh, how, how did you get involved and how have you all managed to get so many people out far <laughs> from Atlanta uh, to join in the opposition? Yeah, I had to get involved because the neighborhood where they are proposing to build Cop City is my neighborhood. I grew up um, a mile away from that site. My grandmother still lives in that home where I was born. And at the time that they approved this, I was living right behind this proposed site behind the local high school. So there was no way that I could stand by while Mayor Andre Dickens and the city of Atlanta, in conjunction with the county of DeKalb, decided that they were going to destroy the biggest natural resource that we have in our neighborhood. And for me, it was very personal because growing up in that same neighborhood, that neighborhood has been targeted for environmental racism since I was a little girl. There used to be landfills in our neighborhood. Like we could smell the stink of it for miles as we drove around. Those landfills were only closed within the past five years. But now you take that and you want to take the largest urban forest known to this side of the Southeastern United States, which contains the South River. The South River is the headwater of one of the largest water systems here in the state of Georgia. It flows into the Altamaha River, which goes all the way into South Georgia. And this watershed, the South River watershed, is extremely important to us because we need it to filter much of the waste that is running down from the north side of the county into southeastern DeKalb County. Destroying that would really put us in a much worse environmental situation than we've been in. We already have lead in the water from the existing firing range that is right now on part of the property proposed for Cop City. That firing range is in operation 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So much so that my eight-year-old son used to wake up every single night because of gunfire at that firing range. And for my family, we just moved this past weekend, we just moved about two miles away, just so that my son won't be awakened in the night by the gunfire, um, just so that we don't have danger of more lead exposure, although where we live is still in Southeast DeKalb County. So we are still serviced by that watershed, but the wastewater treatment facility there doesn't do much to treat the water. And we all know about the effects of lead in water and lead poisoning with young children as far as educational outcomes and developmental delays. So it's really important for us to make sure that they stop polluting our water, which there would be much more of should Cop City be built. I mean, they're already in violation of the Clean Water Act just by clear cutting trees in that area. The, the level of silt runoff is well above what is allowed into our water. And that's been the basis of a lot of our arguments with the zoning board in DeKalb County to try to get them to rescind the land disturbance permit for that land. But knowing those things, we had to get involved. We've been able to galvanize people all over the world, mainly because not only would this affect the city of Atlanta and the state of Georgia, projects like Cop City become models for other places. And we saw it happen in Chicago. We've seen it proposed in other places and we're trying to stop these militarized training facilities from popping up because these things create an inherent danger for our community. Militarization of police always equals state repression because when your police become militarized, then where's the protection for your everyday citizens? It's really not fair that residents should have to worry about tanks riding down their streets. When I still lived close to the forest, I saw SWAT tanks 
from Fulton County, from the Fulton County Sheriff's Office, riding down my street, going to the proposed site of Cop City. And that's because since 2020, the state of Georgia has received over 2,700 pieces of surplus military equipment, tanks, night vision goggles and scopes, um, other militarized gear for officers to wear. And now we see tanks literally around the place that we used to take our son into the woods to show him Constitution Lakes and the South River watershed to show him where Entrenchment Creek was and what it means to our society. Now we can't do that because we've got militarized tanks and other uh, police agencies out there trying to make sure that we don't access a green space that was supposed to be for the residents of DeKalb County in perpetuity. I, I know, Kiana Jones, that there have been some successes. I know here in Charlottesville, Virginia, we stopped the police getting military equipment. I know in Philadelphia, they've stopped getting military equipment from the federal government as part of a settlement with the George Floyd protesters. I think in Memphis, they've mm -hmm. stopped the police from even having anything to do with traffic, uh, traffic stops. Uh, but if but if one city gets one of these things, as you say, isn't this going to be a huge blow to demilitarizing police everywhere else? It will, because there would be police officers from all over the country and other parts of the world that would come and train there. So the city of Atlanta, in partnership with the Georgia International Law Enforcement Exchange, already has programs that trains police executives and other officers with international military forces, such as the Israeli Defense Force. The Israeli Defense Force has been training here in Georgia, even with the Georgia State University Police. And I'm trying to understand why a university police would need to have militarized training, but they would also be contracting with other police foundations throughout the country to have officers trained here by the Israelis and other international military forces. And I don't see that there could be anything positive that will come out of that because there is no de-escalation training that would be happening at this facility. This is all military operations on urban terrain. Within the original plans, the mock city was cited for the purpose of urban warfare training. Today, the word urban is synonymous with black. And when you say that you are going to be training for urban warfare, that means warfare on black bodies. And you're putting this facility in one of the most black communities, one of the predominantly black communities that has not been hit hard by gentrification yet. And it affects the city of Atlanta and the county of DeKalb. And what I see is that with all of the issue around the city of Buckhead, or I would say the neighborhood of Buckhead wanting to secede from the city of Atlanta, Cop City was essentially the compromise for the city of Atlanta to say, hey, we can't let you take all of your money from, from us because you're 40% of our tax base, so we need your money. But in order to keep you happy, to maintain the exclusivity of Buckhead, to make sure that these pesky protesters don't make it into Buckhead, we'll put Cop City right there in one of the blackest neighborhoods so that we can keep them from ever even making it to Buckhead. I know my great grandparents lived not far from there and I know stories of ancestors of mine funerals where all the Ku Klux Klan big shots show up and nobody knew until the funeral. I mean, there's mm -hmm. entrenched racism in this. I mean, this is not far from Stone Mountain, right? Correct, correct. And we know the stories about Stone Mountain what was done and is still being done at Stone Mountain in the battle for Stone Mountain as a Confederate monument to be changed, to have the, the engraving on the side of Stone Mountain just taken out. One of the things that I don't think people realize is that Atlanta, the city of Atlanta has more Confederate monuments than any other place in the state of Georgia. And um, even the street names, in like Fulton County and different places are names of people who aided the Confederacy and were generals in the Confederacy. And the, the county of Fulton has the most, the most streets named after people who are not the people that we should celebrate in history. But the state of Georgia has wanted to maintain its grip on Confederate nationalism for a long time. 
And in recent years, a lot of places, finally, even here in Charlottesville, where they had the Nazi rally, they've taken the statues down and changed the names. Not so much in Atlanta. It has not been happening as quickly as we would like it to. There is proposed legislation to take down some of these monuments. Some of them have been, but it's really moving slow because unfortunately there are some people who believe that we need to maintain that hold on white supremacy and racism in order to disparage people. And unfortunately I do see it as a very political thing because what I'm seeing is Republicans being very afraid of the unity between minority groups and seeing that we come together to stand up for just the right thing. And many times it happens to be around political issues because political issues have been deliberately implemented and used in order to legislate racism and white supremacy. So we do see it happen around legislation a lot, but just as far as morality, and doing the right thing by treating people the way that you would like to be treated, by having everyone feel safe in society, and by giving people equal opportunity. What we see is that minorities are coming together to work together to make sure that we can ensure that for our posterity. And those people who want to uphold um, the status quo have really, really been mounting a massive effort against us in doing that. We are speaking with Kiana Jones, who is working to stop Cop City. Uh, I saw a video of you uh, speaking to Atlanta City Council and speaking some words of truth, letting them really have it that they were misrepresenting the people they're supposed to work for. Any Are they listening? Any changes out of those folks? You know, I will say that whether they change their minds or not, they're listening because what they see is that even if they don't want to listen to what I have to say, what they can't ignore is the massive action from people all over this world against Cop City. We have been able to show people what a danger and a detriment Cop City is, not only to us, but to people worldwide. And I do believe that the death of our comrade, Manuel Esteban Baez Teran, who we knew as Torchiguita, has really been the shot heard around the world. You know, the Revolutionary War, that first shot, they say was the shot heard around the world. But I believe that Torchigita's murder, those shots are the shots that have been heard around the world. Because what we saw was a peaceful protester sitting in a meditative position with their hands up, get shot 57 times. And we see a cover up by the state of Georgia, the Georgia Bureau of Investigation and the city of Atlanta Police Department. That whole task force that was convened to go in and raid the forest. What we see is that they're content to lie to us because what they want to say, they wanna paint a narrative of a violent protest that was happening, You know, some type of resistance to law enforcement as they came in. But what we see even through the official autopsy report is that a, a person was killed for protesting. And you know, we make a lot of difference between peaceful and non-peaceful protesting. And sometimes I think that people really should understand that when it comes down to protesting, I don't know that protest is seen as peaceful by some people because of the fact that people believe that resistance to oppression is something that is violent. And they see that as violence because it threatens their position in society. It threatens their ability to continue white supremacy and racism. And it bothers me that we always have to say, oh, non-violently protesting. Even if a person was doing what was considered to be violent, I mean, people believe that property destruction is violent. If a person doesn't stand to get hurt in the midst of the property destruction, is it really violent? But again, you know, even if a person was doing what was considered to be violent, if that person was not trying to kill someone else, why should that person's life have been taken? And I do believe that it's important for us to ask ourselves that question. Why do we think it's okay for police officers to just kill people with impunity? We make a lot of excuses for law enforcement when it comes down to the, the negation of the sanctity of life. 
Very well said. And I would hope that we could consider a young man sitting with his hands up, nonviolent, sitting for a just cause, nonviolent, and consider taking money from people who are poor and hungry and homeless and putting it into building a monstrosity like Cop City. Consider that to be structural violence. It absolutely is because the city of Atlanta is not seeking $30 million to put into education. They're not seeking $30 million to put into resources that would mitigate the root causes of crime. They're not providing stable housing for their residents. As a matter of fact, the city of Atlanta just had to give back millions in housing assistance funds to the federal government. So you wouldn't even help people obtain stable housing with money that you had, free money from the federal government, but you're willing to take $32 million because this project without any building having started. They're simply clear cutting the forest right now, but they're already two and a half million dollars over budget. They are going to have to go back to council to ask for more money, more taxpayer dollars to fund this project that is situated between two local schools. So my son who was awakened every night by those gunshots from the firing range, there are children who are outside at recess as we speak who are hearing some of those shots. There are teenagers who are at a high school, might be at a band practice outside. They might be having gym outside or just eating lunch outside. How do you think they feel when they hear this and it's so close to their school, like literally McNair High School sits directly across from part of the forest that was included in the land swap for this deal. So I'm really trying to understand why the city of Atlanta is so willing to put money into this project that the majority of the community doesn't want, but they're not putting any money into the programs and resources that would benefit their residents. It, it really is bringing the wars home. It, you, you describe what kids in Afghanistan are living with for 20 years. Uh, what what motivates uh, a city council elected? Uh, I, I mean, you, you're <laughs> protesting because the police murder people, and then they go ahead and murder a nonviolent protester resisting the construction of a site where they're going to train police to murder. Who would not listen to you at that point? Uh, well, what we see here in the city of Atlanta, unfortunately, is what we know as the Atlanta way where Black elected officials here in the city of Atlanta and the Black elite maintain a silent partnership with the purveyors of the notion of white supremacy here. And what that agreement says is that we will allow you to rule in your communities as long as you are ruling the way we want you to, that you're not allowing people to have so much of a say that as long as you further our agenda, we will help you gentrify. We will help you make these neighborhoods look better. We will help you get a legacy for your name. But what you have to do is make sure that you include police because they are the ones who protect the status quo as it is. So what we're going to do is take our rich partners in these major corporations. We're going to get the heads of Coca-Cola, Home Depot, Delta, Truist Bank, Bank of America, J.P. Morgan Chase, Wells Fargo, um, Chick-fil-A, Chick-fil-A, and the Waffle House, the Atlanta Hawks Foundation, the Arthur Blank Foundation. The owner of the Atlanta Falcons, Arthur Blank, puts a lot of money into the Atlanta Police Foundation. And what we're going to make sure that we do is we're going to have your police force really be in debt to us. And they are going to be able to further our agendas because they are going to help us criminalize anybody who tries to go against things as we say they should be. That silent partnership allows the Black elite and Black elected officials to maintain a position of status, to get kickbacks for their family, to have their legacy and their names etched in the annals of history, I guess, for good or bad reasons, but they think good reasons. And that partnership means that the Black electeds and the Black elite, they stay away from those other Black people who are not the desirable ones. They get to make sure that the undesirables will be criminalized in one way or another so that they are either in a perpetual state of poverty or they stay within the jail system. 
in the prison industrial complex. So they are continuing that cycle. It's been done in Atlanta for quite some time. They love to tout us as the birthplace of civil rights or the cradle of civil rights. They throw Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s name around a lot, <laughs> but none of them embody the true principles that he stood for. And what we see starting even as far back as mayors like Shirley Franklin, you know, since Shirley Franklin, then there was Kasim Reed, Keisha Lance Bottoms, who did absolutely nothing but style her way into a mayoral seat and then couldn't even last in a job at the White House because she is really of no substance. Even Mayor Andre Dickens, who has succeeded her, no substance. I, I am anxious to hear who can tell me one true policy initiative that Andre Dickens has put forth? Cop City is his vanity project. This is his legacy maker. This is how he wants to be known. He wants to be the guy who has stamped out free speech and offered repression to those that he claims to represent. And unfortunately, those other members of the city council, they want to follow in his footsteps because they believe that this is the way to get to their political aspirations. There have been some of them who have shared with me personally that they have aspirations for higher office. So they are going to go along to get along. These yeah. people are afraid of what's gonna happen if they go against the major corporations because they won't get funding anymore. They won't have their campaigns run by major corporations and they won't get to maintain the power that they think they have. But for many of them, I am going to guess that they have a, a much more vested interest like jobs for their loved ones and friends yeah. that they are afraid of losing. So I would believe that that is the motivation for ignoring the voice of the public. Kiana Jones, we got about three minutes left. Uh, <laughs> what's the plan? Are people still resisting that clear cutting? Or should we be boycotting Chick-fil-A and Coca-Cola? What's, what, what's the plan and how can people help? So Absolutely, we should be boycotting Chick-fil-A, Coca-Cola, Waffle House, Home Depot. I haven't shopped at Home Depot in probably about a decade, to tell you the truth, because I've known the things that Home Depot has been in support of. Um, definitely boycott these corporations that support the Atlanta Police Foundation. We are still resisting in every legal way the clear cutting of this forest. What's been the most disheartening thing is how our very legitimate zoning board appeals have been ignored and upheld. There was a judge that put in a court order to stop work based on the appeal to the zoning board, the initial appeal, but then DeKalb County CEO put in an executive order to close the public park that the judge had declared open um, until the case could be decided. CEO Michael Thurman decided to close that public park, which now gave the APF leeway to start clear cutting illegally. It continues. We do want people to follow stopcopcitysolidarity.org. You can find out what you can do in your local cities. Follow community movement builders. Follow Defend the Atlanta Forest and the hashtag stopcopcity on all social media platforms but definitely the fight continues. We are still showing up to city council meetings. We are still fighting this uh, through every legal avenue that we can find. And most of all, we are amplifying the story of the murder of our comrade because at the heart of all of this is the repression by the state and the militarization of police that we don't want because they don't further the cause of goodness in our community. We have been speaking with the Reverend Kayana Jones about Cop City. Check out StopCopCitySolidarity.org and hashtag StopCopCity everywhere. Kayana Jones, thank you very, very much for coming on Talk World Radio. Thank you so much for having me. This is Talk World Radio. I'm David Swanson. Take action at RootsAction.org. Help end war at WorldBeyondWar.org. Read or listen to today's Peace Almanac entry at PeaceAlmanac.org. All past shows can be heard at TalkWorldRadio.org. Talk World Radio is produced in Charlottesville, Virginia, and syndicated by Pacifica Network. There is no way to peace. Peace is the way.